Hello, my name is Connor Corman, and in this review, I'm going to be reviewing the Nikon 17 to 35 millimeter f stop 2 lens. What I'm going to be doing in this review is I'm going to talk about my first thoughts about the lens, uh, the build quality, and all the features on the lens, and how it feels, and then I'm going to talk about the image quality. I'm going to use screen flow for that so we can see some sample images and um, look at sharpness and stuff like that. Then I'm also going to check out the autofocus speed, and then I'm going to talk about how this lens does in the field. First thing I want to talk about is the look and feel of this lens. Now this is an older lens, so it's got the feel of the older lens. It's got the aperture ring down there. It's um, quite large and it actually feels very solid. The nice thing about the older Nikon lenses is that they were always very well built and very solid. Um, better built, they feel better built than they are today. For example, the 16-35mm doesn't feel as nicely built as the 17-35mm to does. Um, another thing that's great about these lenses, and with most, most Pro lenses, is how nice and smooth the zoom rings are and how large they are as well. Very easy to grab, and very easy to use, very smooth throughout the entire range. Now, although the 16-35mm lens has technically replaced it, I actually wouldn't consider it that way because one of the advantages of the 17-35 is it gives you pretty much the same range as the 16-35, but it also has an f-stop of 2.8, so it's a full stop, faster. And that's especially good for people who are um, want to do wide-angle, low-light photography and need that extra stop first. Although, in reality, the 16-35mm is substantially sharper than the 17 to 35, even at f stop 4. Um, if you compare these at f stop 4, the 16 to 35 millimeter is sharper. It's just got amazing performance. And what I'm going to do now is I'm actually going to put this on the camera so you can get some scale, see what it looks like. I'm going to put it on the camera. This is what it looks like here on the Nikon D3X camera. As you can see, it's a very large lens. Um, about the same size actually as the 16 to 35, which is surprising. Um, the 16 to 35 is very large considering that it's uh, f stop 4 lens, but this uh, 17 to 35 millimeter lens is definitely a little bit larger and a little bit heavier, but that's what you get when you get a full stop faster. Now, what we're going to do is we're going to go over to screen flow, check out some sample images to the image quality. All right, now we're going to take a look at the image quality of the Nikon 17 to 35 millimeter lens. And we're going to start here at the wide end, 17 millimeter, at the largest f-stop of f-stop 2.8. We're going to look at center sharpness first. Now, the center sharpness is not bad, but it's not perfect here. You can definitely tell it's a little bit soft in the center, although not terribly soft. When we stop down to f-stop 4, you can see a dramatic improvement in the sharpness, especially in the Palo Verde trees. Um, you can see that the twigs are much more visible. If I f-stop 5.6, um, you get another dramatic improvement in sharpness. Compared to the 4, you can see a little bit more detail in those trees. And that's pretty much the optimum aperture for the center. Um, by f at f-stop 8, it's pretty much the same sharpness. And so on. And by f-stop 11, you will start seeing a little bit of diffraction starting to set in. Now we're going to take a look at the corners, and this is an older lens, so the corners are quite soft at f-stop 2.8, um, which was pretty much the norm for back in the day with these lenses. But even though it is softer in the corner, it still can perform, uh, it still performs decently well, although not nearly as good as the Nikon 14-24 to or Nikon 16-35mm to millimeter lens. It's a lot sh a softer in the corners than those uh, lenses of today. When we stop down to f-stop 4, you can see a dramatic improvement in the sharpness in the corners, but it's still very soft, especially in the far corners. Not until f-stop 5.6 do you really start to see the entire frame in sharp focus. And by f-stop 8, the uh, entire frame is in focus here. And even down in the extreme corners, you can't really get those in You can get those in uh, pretty good sharpness here. So by f-stop 8, the entire frame is, is sharp, and of course the center sharpness is great too, but this lens does not, uh, especially by today's standard, does not perform that well in the corners uh, wide open from f-stop 2.8 to f-stop 4. Um, it's not horrible, but once again, I wouldn't want to use those f-stops for landscape photography because you will get significant softness in your image. For low-light photography, though, it might work a little bit better, especially for portraiture, because you don't necessarily need the corners to be all that sharp. 
but still that's definitely something to think about. And here's the 35 millimeter end. Now center sharpness 35 millimeter is a lot better than at 17. It's tack sharp at 2.8 and it doesn't really change throughout the range. Pretty much stays just as sharp and um, f-stop 8 probably being the sharpest. So center sharpness is great at the 35 mil millimeter end. Now um, uh, the 17 millimeter end is definitely the worst performer in this case. So um, every other focal uh, length other than 17 does perform better than the 17 millimeter end in both the uh, centers and the corners of the images. Now we're going to take a look at the corners here, starting with f-stop 2.8. Once again, there's quite a significant amount of sh uh, softness in the corners of these images at 2.8 and f-stop 4 you see an improvement but um, it still is soft it's not until f-stop 5.6 that you really get a sharp image and at f-stop 8 you have your optimal aperture so the optimal apertures for this lens are probably 5.6 and 8 now here's the flare of this lens at 17 millimeter. Not that bad of a performer, um, about what I expected for a pro lens. Just keep the sound out of the corner and you won't have any flare in your image. And at 35 millimeter N2, it performs pretty dang well, um, especially for its age. So just make sure you keep the sun out of the corners of the image to uh, keep the flare away. And the distortion of this lens is very well controlled. Um, I, I was surprised by that. Here we have the flat horizon. Um, you can see a little bit of barrel distortion, but other than that, it's not very noticeable. And then at 35 millimeter, you don't basically see any distortion at all. Maybe there's a bit of pin cushioning, but um, it's it's not not very noticeable. And now we're going to actually take a look at the vignetting in the images. And here you can see at f-stop 2.8 there is a significant amount of vignetting in the corners, especially in the top corners where the sky is. When we stop down to f-stop 4, a lot of that goes away, although it is still a little bit visible in the corners. But f-stop 5.6, vignetting is pretty much gone. And f-stop 8, it's completely invisible. So vignetting performance, I would say, is good on this lens. Um, it's uh, not the best that I've seen, but it, it's pretty good. Um, especially when stopped down to between f-stop 5.6 and 8 is um, when the vignetting is pretty much almost gone. All in all, this is kind of a tough lens to, um, to choose with. It's uh, got good and bad to it. The good part is, is that it's a full stop faster than the 16 to 35. However, the bad part is it's a lot sharper when wide open. So it's a little, it'll be a little bit difficult to choose between these lenses. If you're a landscape photographer, I would suggest just going for the 16 to 35 millimeter lens um, because it does offer a lot more sharpness for those corners. Um, for those of you who are into low light photography, that's a little bit of a tougher decision. 16 to 35 is a lot sharper, but the 17 to 35 has a full stop. Uh, of more speed for those low light situations. So if you really need the speed um, in a lens and need a, an aperture of f-stop 2.8 then you might want to consider the 17 to 35 millimeter lens. You just have to be careful with those corners because they will be soft. Alright, now we're going to actually look at the autofocus speed of this lens. Now we're going to do that is we're going to focus it to its minimum focusing distance and then focus out to infinity. As you can see, this is an AFS lens and even though it's old, still focuses just as fast and just as quietly as the newest lenses of today. Now, how does this lens perform out in the field? It's um, very sharp, not as sharp as the 16 to 35 millimeter, but it still performs very well. And of course, like I said, what makes this lens most useful and unique uh, from the 16 to 35 is that it does have an f-stop of 2.8. So for those of you who are into low light photography, uh, wide angle low light photography, this is definitely a lens to consider over that lens. However, if you're into landscape photography, if it were me, I would actually go for the 16 to 35 millimeter because you're going to stop down anyway with those landscape pictures, and the 16 to 35 millimeter is sharper um, than the, this particular lens and does perform better for landscape photography. And of course, this is a pro lens, pro built. Um, now it can pretty much take anything nature dishes out rain, dust, humidity, anything at all can take a hit, get a little banged up, and it will work just fine. And uh, this has been a review of the Nikon 17-35mm f-stop 2.8 lens.